Time spent with Christ Jesus is time well spent. And time spent with Christ Jesus is time with results. I want to assure you that your time is well spent. By the end of the service, I believe you will see the fruits of your coming here today. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yes. People of God, if you examine people's lives today, you agree with me that many who want to live in a better condition if you examine people's lives today it is a fact that many have acquired wealth fame position but the satisfaction and contentment which should come along with all those achievements are evidently lacking in their lives. Many find out that they have no peace, no joy. And the Bible says, true joy comes from loving Jesus Christ, not from the things we amass. Money can buy medication, but money cannot buy good health. Money can treat, but money cannot heal. Today, many, in spite of their worth, fame, position, are on the sick bed, praying that all that they have acquired should go so that they may regain their good health. Here you are, sitting freely. Here you are, looking freely. Here you are, laughing freely. Do you want to exchange your good health for money? I cannot hear you. Do you want to exchange your good health for position? No. Do you want to exchange your good health for fame? No. People of God, satisfaction in life is not all about having money or other worldly possessions. You have to experience God. Until you experience God, there will be dissatisfaction in your life. A sense of hunger to know what life is all about. A desire to know what happens after life is over. You will not have rest, peace of mind, until you experience God. Tell your neighbor you need to experience God. I cannot hear you. Yes, that will bring us to our message today titled, You Need to Experience God. Let me take you to our proof text, the book of Luke, chapter 12. We take our reading from verse 13. Hallelujah. Because of time, let's go to verse 16. Luke 
chapter 12, verse 16. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. <laughs> The Bible says that the rich fool invested his entire life in his possessions and failed to acknowledge God. If the rich fool invested his entire life in his possessions and failed to acknowledge God, this means he did not regard God as the source of his money. Property. Family. Land. And everything. One day, the Lord said to him, You fool, you have no tomorrow. This very night, your life shall be required of you. Tell your neighbor, your life is in God's hand. Once again, your life is in God's hand. You cannot control him by relying on bits and pieces from the Bible. You cannot control him by relying on bits and pieces from the Bible. You need the whole counsel of God. Some people choose to pick out a few words from the Bible and live by them. For example, they choose to pick out healing and prosperity as their scriptural foundation. Those people who choose to pick out a few words from the Bible and live by them are not eager about such other areas as holiness, consecration, judgment, evangelism, and the love of God. However, these areas and the love of God work in concert to develop into strong, mature Christians. These areas and the love of God work in concert to develop into strong, matured Christians. We have to acknowledge God in all spiritual things, referring to every good thought, every good purpose, and every good works to his grace from whom we receive it. Whoever is strong, whoever is great among men, it is God's hand that make them so.
Whatever strength we have, it is God that gives it to us. Why should anyone boast of his own natural ability and power? You, rich man, should not concentrate on your wealth. And you, poor man, should not concentrate on your poverty. Because treasure on earth have their habits of disappointing their owners. As they don't offer permanent security. Only treasures stored up in heaven are permanent and secure. They retain their value because they are under God's own security. We have to recognize who we are before God because then we will see the need to always consider his will in everything we say, everything we do, and in every plan we make. If you exclude God today in whatever plans you are making, you are certainly not prepared for tomorrow. The question is, will you and I be around tomorrow? It is not just answer you can say, I will be around. There are two answers. One, the literal level, which requires a yes or no answer. Two, the deeper level, which expresses the uncertainties of life. Which expresses the uncertainty of life. It is surely reasonable to make plans for the future. But we must always do so with an awareness of life's uncertainties. In James 1 verse 10 to 11, James had earlier compared man and all that man could boast of as a beautiful flower which blossoms, that is, prosper for a while, and then withers too soon. What then is the good in making long-term plans? I want to be this, I want to be that, when we do not even know what tomorrow will bring forth. When you look around the world today, you agree with me that God has purposely kept us in the dark concerning future events. We have to understand that we have no power over what becomes of us the next minute, the next hour, the next day next week, next month, next year. If, every, if anyone here has control, a, just raise your hand. <laughs> yes. God has purposely kept us in the dark concerning future events. We must understand that we have no control over what becomes of us the next minute, next hour, next day, next week, next month, next year. If anyone here has control, raise up your hand. Job knew that his purpose in life was to glorify God in every situation. He was ready to sacrifice his body, his health, time, ease, comfort, pleasure for the glory of the Lord. To Job, 
God was the only reason, the only thing, the only interest. Do you see God as the only reason, the only thing, the only interest? Job was ready to sacrifice his health, his body, time, ease, comfort, pleasure for the glory of the Lord. He placed God above all other considerations. To Job, God was the only reason, the only thing, the only interest. Do you see God as the only reason, the only thing, the only interest? When we love nothing in comparison of him, but in reference to him alone, we make him the only thing, the only reason, the only interest. When we love nothing in comparison of him, but in reference to him alone, we make him the only reason, the only thing, the only interest. The Bible says, serving God is a thing of the mind. Like Job, when the minds agree in relationship with God, you will place him above all other considerations. When the mind agrees in relationship with God, you will place God above all other considerations. Can you see why many fail to place God where he belongs? When we based our relationship with God on blessing alone, we will have nothing to rest our belief on when the blessings are taken away. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, teaches us in that Luke 12, verse 13 to 21, to always see the need to involve God in every plan we make, to trust him and his kingdom and free ourselves from worrying about money. Because of money, Many kill, steal, and destroys. Today, it is money that dictates our direction instead of the giver of the money. Ask Zacchaeus, and he will tell you that if you are focused only on making money, a large slice of life will pass you by. I mean, a very important part of life will pass you by. That is why you see people with riches without joy. Money without the essentials of life. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? Say to your neighbor, free yourself. Say to your neighbor, free yourself from worrying about money. Free yourself from worrying about position. Free yourself from worrying about power. Free yourself from worrying about authority, which do not actually guarantee your future. Does money guarantee your future? No. Does position in your place of work guarantee your future? No. Does authority and power guarantee your future? No. What then is the good in making long-term plans? In Psalms 51 verse 22, in Psalms 55 verse 22, 1 Peter 5 verse 7, the Bible enjoins us to cast our burdens upon the Lord. I take it again. In Psalm 55 verse 22, 
First Peter 5 verse 7, the Bible enjoins us to cast our burdens upon the Lord. The best remedy against anxiety is to cast our burden upon the Lord, believing his divine will to calm our spirit. To cast our burden upon God is to rest our burdens in his providence and promise. To cast our burden upon God is to rest our trust in his providence and promise. Remember, his promise does not say he will keep us free from cares and anxieties, but that he will give us enough grace to stand and resist those troubles that causes cares, anxieties, and unnecessary fears. If we commit our ways and works to him, he promised to carry us in the arms of his power and will strengthen our spirit by his spirit. So why don't we trust and let him prove himself? After all, he is the governor of our future. I mean, he owns our future. This is more reason why God gives us plenty of evidence because he knows that until we experience God, there will be dissatisfaction in our lives. A sense of hunger to know what life is all about. A desire to know what happens after life is over. You will not have rest, peace of mind, until you experience God. Say to your neighbor, you need to experience God. I cannot hear you. You need to experience God. Any moment from now, you will experience God's power. As you experience God's power, trust him. Believe the way out for you has come. The way out for your business has come. The way out for you has come. Hallelujah. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up.